what specifically about state management are you having trouble with? Like localized component state or like application architecture where you have a bunch of components with data flowing through all of them. In this world, this is called a higher order component. You know, it's essentially a component that contains a bunch of subcomponents. And what can become tricky here is all of these subcomponents tend to have state. But you always want to like think about your application data being controlled in a central place at the top of your application. And then this is the thing that interfaces with like an external service or a data store or whatever, right? And so typically you have a localized DB layer in your front end app. Some people use frameworks for owning data, but this is where you basically have all your data modeling. You basically construct what all of your data objects for your entire application will look like and be modeled here. So for instance, this is where I would define what my messages objects look like. I would define what my user objects look like, right? This is where all of my data objects would live. And then lower down in the application, you would essentially have a bunch of components that make up your app. And then typically what you have is your application. So you basically have your container, which wires up the app and basically starts instantiating all this stuff. Typically what you want to try to do is you want to manage state as high up in the application as humanly possible. It's very common, I think, in the world of this, where this is basically your web API and then behind it, you might have a database and all that other stuff. And in this layer, you might have your own object models, but just know that what happens is when you make that call, your DB models or whatever object that comes from an external service will transform those models into what your model and what your app depends on, right? And then you build your entire app off of what your domain models look like. And why this is important is because now, if somebody were to change DB models and add different properties or remove properties or whatever, uh, you wouldn't have to change any of your lower level application. Right. All these things should also have their own internal kind of properties and stuff that they depend on through interfaces and stuff like that. So if this does change, you will break your whole application for sure, unless you write it in a backwards compatible way. But at the same time, if you just handle the transformation logic in one spot of your application, you're good. They make a lot of frameworks that allow you to kind of manage state throughout your application. But the best thing that you can do is you pass data down, you pass immutable data down. You never let data mutate, right? You just pass props down from as high up in the application as you can. And what happens is to then proxy whatever happens down here back up through function callbacks. They make alternative solutions for how data gets data flows. There's something called Flux, I think, which each of these things just publish to a channel, which eventually updates your data at the top. So you pass props down and then each of the components can essentially publish data updates. But if you don't do that, then you have to basically do callback hell, which is essentially how I do stuff. I have a user component and then this guy has callback interface design where it could take an on add callback and on remove and an on select callback. And then these user components, they have the list of users which take in the on select and on remove. These don't do anything other than render the state and then they wire up the UI to act on the state. They just basically like when you click things, it handles the remove user. So all it is is doing is basically proxying the action and the implementation details or what's happening down here all the way back up to the top level of the component, which will then basically act on stuff. So that's why like internally this list, this item and this click event does not change or mutate any state. It just provides a hook into the parents that basically are using that component to return what happened. Right, it's an interface. If I want to remove this, it says remove JV Falco, but that's not happening in the user item component, which is like the row. That's not happening in the list component. It's not happening in the user's component. It's happening at the top of the application where the user component is just providing in these callbacks. And then these callbacks are essentially implemented at the top of the application right here. And so what this will do is when I select a user, now I could basically talk to the user service and I could get the user information out of it at the top of the application. But you can see I started to write like a message service, a user service. These are like encapsulations of the services that will talk to external service for different types of data. And then here is the transformation step that I was just talking about in terms of coming from a message service, you got the, the server models coming back. And then what I do is I transform those into localized view models, right? So I get all the messages, then I map them, and then I basically convert them into models that the front end uses, the I messages. But the general idea is all the behavior is pretty much wired up here, at least the core behavior that mutates or acts on the models. 